it's me. Welcome back to another episode of Blood Talks. We are going to be talking about a technique that is commonly used in blood bank, which is saline replacement. The saline replacement technique is used to differentiate between LULO and a true agglutination. Without further ado, let's get into it. LULO formation is an in vitro phenomena caused by abnormally high protein in the patient's serums or plasma. It is difficult to detect true agglutinations in a test system containing rural promoting serums or plasma. Right? Think about it. The LULO phenomena could be mistakenly identified as agglutinations. And what happens when there is an unexpected agglutinations? You will have to identify what caused the agglutinations and that could delay blood transfusions that the patient desperately needed. Rillo can be easily recognized when viewed under my scope if the red blood cells stuck together on their flat sides. This is what we see in the textbook, but sometimes things are not always what it seems in the textbook. In Rullo, the red blood cells are often seen to irregularly bind to each other, which give appearance of clumps, which closely resemble antibody-mediated agglutinations. That's where the problems come in. In the saline replacement tube technique, serums and cells are brought together or incubated to allow attachment. But the serum is removed after centrifuge and saline is added at the resuspending media prior to checking and reading the test tube. There are things that you should keep in mind when performing saline replacement. Number one, saline replacement should not be performed with any potentiator such as lisp, albumin, peg, etc. You are trying to tell if this agglutination is a true agglutination or protein promoted agglutination. So you don't want to add an agglutination enhancer to the mix. Number two, Rulo can be seen in both immediate spin phase and 37 degree phase. Rulo will not occur at the anticoagulants or cum phase. Any guess why? It is because the patient serums which contain the excess protein has been removed during the watching step. Three, Knowing a patient's medical conditions could help in identifying LULO. There are a few conditions that the patient would have abnormally high immunoglobulin proteins in the serums of plasma that could contribute to LULO formations. How can you tell if it is a true agglutination or LULO? Well, it is simple because that is why we are forming a saline replacement. A true agglutination will still show after the saline replacement, whereas the LULO will not. Granted that, sometimes you may need to do more than one saline replacement. But if you are seeing significantly less agglutinations after the first saline replacement and are able to associate with the patient condition, then try to perform saline replacement the second time. Reagents 0.9% saline Reagent cells the reagent cells could be the red blood cells from a unit that you are about to cross match, or it can be a reagent cell that you use in the lab. Supply. Test tube, plastic pipette, centrifuge, test tube rack, marking pen, microscope, agglutinations viewer. Procedures. Step 1. Label tube. Step 2. As screening cells or red blood cells from a cross-match unit. Step 3. Add two drops of patient plasma or serums to each tube. Step 4. At this step, you can either skip to number 5 for immediate spin saline replacement or incubate the test tube for 30 minutes at 37 degrees. Step 5. After incubations, spin the test tube for 15 to 20 seconds. Step 6. Carefully remove the patient plasma or serums from the tube with plastic pipette, leaving cells button undisturbed. Step 7. Carefully add two drops of saline to the tubes, allowing the saline to trickle down. Step 8. Gently resuspending the mixture and observe the agglutination. The absence of agglutination indicates that the agglutinations came from LULO formation. The presence of agglutinations indicates that the reactions are true agglutinations, antibody or antibody presence. Note. Number 1. 
The procedures can be done at either 37th or immediate spin phase. Number 2. If there is an agglutination at comb phase, it is not due to lulo formations and likely an antibody is present. Number 3. Lulo formations is secondary to a property of the serums or plasma which cause an outer surface changes on the red cells, resulting in spontaneous agglutinations resembles stack like coil or cluster of cells. 4. Lulo is not enhanced by a decrease in temperature, so Lulo is not triggered by the blood being outside of our body temperature, which is 37 degrees. So performing the test at room temperature does not promote the formations of Lulo. Number 5. Lulo shows no preference for any specific cells. It is a spontaneous aggregation that is uniform among all reagent cells including in auto control. So you can change your reagent cells and the RULO is still present. Number six, but RULO is associated with intravenous administrations of high protein molecular weight. Number seven, RULO formation is secondary to some of the illnesses. That's why the patient medical history is important. Thank you for staying with me until the end. What do you want to know next? Do you want to know more about blood bank, chemistry, or microbiology? If you have any burning questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Lastly, if you have not done so, please like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell. I will see you in the next episode of Blood Talks. And as always, remember, your blood tells you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye!